Hello everyone, welcome to The Dev Method. My name is Ricky. Today we're gonna to be looking at adding ESLint to your Next.js application. So uh, before we get started with that, let's just define what linting actually is or what lint actually is. Uh, I pulled it up here on Wikipedia. Pretty nice explanation of it here. Um, just tells us that uh, it is for flagging programming errors slash bugs or defects, maybe stylistic errors, so just like how the, how the code's actually written. Um, or uh, suspicious constructs. I don't know what suspicious constructs would be, but hey, you could go on the Wikipedia uh, site here and, and read up more. But essentially what I think of it as is it's one of the steps or, or um, maybe part of a whole of testing your application. There's a lot of different things that you can catch in some sort of uh, linting that you might not necessarily catch uh, when actually uh, running a programmatic test on your code. Um, something something as simple as like not using a variable. So you declared variable X and then it never gets used. So you might as well remove it from the code, uh, removes the complexity or maybe the obscurity of the code if you were to review it later. We're gonna go walk through it today, uh, setting it up in our ESLint application. Now, uh, there's a couple things to this. So we do need um, ESLint 11 or greater. Uh, I found in practice that <laughs> The latest version of ES of uh, Next, uh, I'm sorry, not, we need Next JS 11 or greater. And what I found in practice is that uh, 12 is actually the one that you want to use because it's the latest, but also that um, the latest version of Next uh, 11 something just like, I don't know, just didn't work. I was getting strange errors. But anyways, uh, it's as easy as just running uh, next lint to actually run this on your code. And then we're going to get some sort of like output uh, from it. But before I can do that, um, let's just walk through like, how would you start doing this in your application? So what I would start doing, uh, I'm going to branch out from main. So just to give you an idea here of the project structure, I have here um, all of the, the components, the pages, the public, and all these other like configuration files, got the nice little readme in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually create a new branch. So anytime I make a new change like this, um, best to do it on a branch. That way I don't uh, step on anybody else's toes in development. And so I'm going to do that by git checkout dash b, meaning like create this new branch if it doesn't exist and also check out the branch. That's just, that's just how I do it. Um, so add eslint. Boom. So now I'm on that branch and the branch is created. It's not necessarily published anywhere. It's just for my local development right now. So if I do end up making um, changes that I don't like, I can always back out of this. Or if I find something's broken um, and I don't know how to fix it and I decide to just throw away the work, it's only on this branch and it's not um, on the main branch for the rest of the project. So what we need to do to get started here, um, we do need to upgrade some of our dependencies. So I'm using Yarn and uh, the best way that I found uh, to upgrade here, I'm just gonna go add next latest. And uh, let's take a look at our package.json file because that's what's gonna change here. So we do have a dependency of next and uh, I was on 10, now I'm on 12. Great, great first step. Now the next thing uh, that I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, add here the linting. So if I run this command, I'm going to put in lint and then do yarn. Oh, wait, no. Then do next lint. There we go. So now on the command line, I run yarn and then the name of the script and it's going to run it. And it's going to run next lint and it's going to run the next version that is now installed in the uh, node modules. So yarn lint, here it goes. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for you guys so you can see it. Uh, but it just went through and installed all those dependencies as the first thing, the new things that Next.js depends on. Maybe got rid of some old ones that it doesn't use anymore. And uh, the next thing here is, would you like to configure ESLint? Because I have not configured it for the project. So pretty easy to do that. Um, I just choose from one of these choices. If I cancel, it's like backing out. Base, eh, it's just, you know, just base, bare minimum. Uh, now strict is the recommended, so we'll take a look at what that looks like in a moment. Uh, but just to give you an idea, on the website, they do explain in more detail the difference of next and um, the strict. 
So here we go, just gonna do strict, just do the whole shebang. It's a fairly new project, so might as well do it off the, uh, off the bat. All right, cool. Just installed a bunch of stuff. Um, now it's saying if I run the same command again, since it has this eslint rc file, it'll know what to do to lint my project. So let's do it again. Here we go. Cool. All right, I got a couple of warnings, which is perfect. And then um, I have one error. So great. Now I can customize these things. I can learn all about ESLint. You know, there's an ESLint uh, website. So there's a whole plethora of things that you could look up here, ESLint, um, but a lot of it's taken care of for you. And, uh, you know, do some digging if you want um, to learn more. So uh, with that, uh, it's not like I can't run the application because I was able to run it before running this this linting. But now that I have the linting there, it's going to help me and assist me while I'm writing the application. Um, one of the things that I'm going to see here, uh, let's just open up one of these files. So the API hello file. Yeah, let me move this down here. Um, so this is where we have uh, maybe some issues. And as you can see, the uh, nice VS Code editor is squiggling it for me. And it's telling me the same exact warning that was in the output on the command line. And uh, yeah, so it's just saying here, assign arrow function to a variable before exporting it as a module. All right, cool. So basically what it's saying is I should be doing this. Like so. And then export default hello. That's what I was saying to do. And so now I have fixed it. Um, what's another one? Let's run it again. All right, that one's completed. Let's move on to the next one. It's the component head TSX file. So here it is. Uh, very similar as to what was done before. Um, another way I could do this too, instead of just exactly what it's recommending is I could do function head like so. Oop, spelled function wrong, function. There we go. And then I wouldn't need this, but I would need this. There we go. Oh, I don't have to do this. <laughs> I could just do that. It's the next step. But then this is my application head. Um, I don't know if this component should exist. I'll revisit it later, but we got rid of the errors and warnings there. Now I'll run it one more time. No issues. So it might be something you want to do when you're running your build uh, before you deploy. It might be something you want to check for every pull request, but now you have some uh, errors and linting that you can double check with, uh, you know, yourself as programming, double check with the people you collaborate with. All right, so thanks for watching this. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, if you liked it, you do a thumbs up, or if you didn't like it, you know, I guess tell your friends, send it to somebody you don't like. Um, otherwise, have a good one, and uh, I'll see you later.